All right, what's going on everybody? Listen, I wanted to talk about something that is near and dear to a lot of fighting game boomers hearts. You know, I'm an OG at this point, I'm an O-Niner. You know, it's a topic I thoroughly enjoy. It always brings a smile to my face. and makes me laugh every time I think about it. What I wanted to do is just look back at iconic moments of FGC pros beating up on kids in tournaments. Once you get good at a fighting game, it is your God-given right to beat up kids in tournaments. I don't care the situation. I don't care if they're brand new to the game or they've been playing their whole life since they were four years old. When you get matched up with someone in tournament, you go all out and you try to beat some ass. So I just want to look at some iconic moments of fighting game pros beating up kids in tournament because I just think it's hilarious to be quite honest. Now, there is a bit of nuance here. I'm not saying that this is the way we should be treating community members at all times. All right. I'm not saying that we should not be welcoming to new people into the community. I'll go into more detail about that after. But I thought there was a bunch of iconic moments I wanted to share and we can look back at. And of course, you know, I'm starting with the one that for some reason came back up again recently. Hi. Oh, shit. Hi, bud. Oh, can fuck. Me? Oh, my How God. How you so easy on me? Okay, I'm new. Well, I'm, new. I'm new go easy on me. He does come out of the gate asking you to go easy on him. You can see this whole time. Justin is like contemplating his next decision. He hears this young innocent child who is far too young to be playing this rated M extremely gory aimed at adults video game. So Justin is clearly contemplating his uh, next decision here. Has his three decades, two decades at this point fighting game training come to this moment where he's gonna go easy on this youngster here playing Mortal Kombat with the mic on or does he put that two decades of training to work? Welcome to the real world! Welcome to the real world! He puts that training to use right away. I, that's a cheap move. Welcome to the real world! Time to learn! You gonna learn today! That, ladies and gentlemen, is a cheap move! That, ladies and gentlemen, is a cheap you move. You gonna learn today! Who's he talking to? Is this kid streaming? If he doesn't have a future as a fighting game professional, he has a future as a content creator. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a cheap move. Who is he talking to? No, you're using a cheap move. He started blocking, though. No, you're, you're cheating. You you're gonna learn. This is the real world. You learn it early, son. All you ever do oh, my now? God. The moment he jumps. I like I like how the moment he jumps, Justin Wong immediately snipes him out of the air. But the next line is the most important line of this whole video. It's the real world. You learn it early, son. Is all you ever do in your house? Is this all you ever do in your house? No rebuttal <laughs> from Mr. Justin Marvelous Wong here. One of the most winningest Evo champions of all time. Multi fighting game champion here. Is this all you ever do in your house? Um, yeah. <laughs> You know what? He could lay that line on Mia. I have no answer. This is why we go all out on these kids. It's all we got. Listen, if I was in Justin's position right here in a ranked match and I got matched up with a kid on mic, you know, saying go easy on me in a ranked match where we're clearly being match made in order to see who's the better player. You know, we're not sitting down next to the setup at a local. He's not asking me for advice. And then he hits me with that. I'd be like, you're damn right, kid. This is all I do and you see the result right here. All my hard work coming to fruition right now, <laughs> right here. It was all worth it for this moment. Him. You're a freaking jerk. All you keep doing is that. That's freaking not fair. That's all you're going to do. I'm going to hell, guys. Guys, I'm going to fucking Justin, hell. you did nothing oh wrong. God, I'm going to hell. You press the buttons in the game. Justin, I'm here to say you did nothing wrong. That is a classic. I cannot get behind people hating on that moment. Now, obviously, if you use that moment to justify other uh, negative behaviors, that is definitely a different topic. And we'll touch on that in a bit. But I wanted to go into the next classic moment of fighting game players not holding back versus an opponent who might be, you know, 20 years their junior. 801 Strider at EVO 2015 versus Skullzer. I think you might be able to figure out which one is which here. 801 Strider wearing his sponsor jersey. I think he was on Western Wolves at the time. 
Uh, Skulls are wiping the sleep out of his eyes. It's a little bit early for him, you know? He had to get up early for this one. I guess I'll have to put a disclaimer. There is some commentary from some individuals that aren't really the most savory characters in the FGC, so let's keep that in mind. Let's be good sports here, and let's watch yeah, this match. Evo 2015. Now, for some context here, That's right. this is one of Strider's best years ever. Strider just came off a top two finish, I would say. I think it's at CEO 2015. He got to Grand Finals versus uh, Mago, who Mago won CEO 2015, if I'm remembering correctly. Or it was Kazunoko. Sorry, I mixed them up. I think Kazunoko won the event. And... uh. You know, so Strider is having one of his best tournament seasons ever. He had a lot of great performances. And this Capcom Cup, he's actually, you know, he, he's one of the qualifiers from America for Capcom Cup. So this is one of his strongest tournament years ever. The last Evo for Street Fighter 4, which is, you know, his main game that he's been putting a lot of work in. Here he finds himself 8 a.m. pools fighting as an 8-year-old kid. Will have a huge role here in the, yeah, and in the outcome of this that, match. And not in the way that you might think. <laughs> so as you can see here, uh, Skulzer is in what we like to call in the business the vortex. No drop confirms the one frame links after the step kick. Gets the hard knockdown. What's for breakfast? Oh, that is not an answer. The funny thing is, this looks no different than any other match that Abel does good against against any other top level competitor. Skulls are doing a great job as far as I'm concerned. I've I've seen Daigo lose the same way against Abel. For those of you guys that are watching and may not be familiar, 801 Strider is one of the picks. Alright, what's the mix here? Oh, you backdash to bait the DP. <laughs> Strider's playing hard to get that perfect counter hit. He doesn't get the cr cr uh, crashing fierce hard uh, counter hit confirmed, but he gets the new combo for Ultra, the extended light links, to get the next perfect in a row. Styles on him with the rolls. He's one perfect away from getting three perfects in a row on this young boy. He's playing cowboy uh, for additional context, in case you don't know, Evo is in Vegas. This is at Mandalay Bay, I believe, this Evo. So, oh, no, not three uh, I would say Skullzer is very much out of his environment. And uh, there we go. Red focus? No, he just uses the Crashing Fierce to the EX wheel to secure the perfect, to move on in pools in what is potentially the most important tournament of 801 Strider's life, where his round one opponent is a child who can't legally stand in most areas in Vegas. Popping off. He's Popping off on this poor kid. Right Killing esports here, Gustavo. Killing the FGC. Classic match there. I mean, what are you going to do? What, are you going to sit there and go easy on the kid? To me, I think going easy on anybody is so much more disrespectful than giving them the real experience. When you're in tournament, you know how patronizing it is to have someone hold back on you during a tournament match? So Gustavo, I think he chose the right move right there. You know, he uh, he gave him the business, popped off a little bit, said, welcome to the FGC, son. Enjoy the ride. And they actually had a rematch. They actually had a rematch. It wasn't the end of the 801 Strider Skulzer saga here. The grudge match actually came to be. I think this is the next year Evo, or maybe 2017. Skulzer, he's already, uh, already much more grown. This isn't just a set. This is a set for our lives. The set for our lives. Look at Skullzer. Look at that Chad with the, the toothpick. If you can't hear, he's saying you're only going to get one perfect on me this time instead of three. Skullzer with the birdie. He got perfected three times in their last encounter. Gets the first hit. That's a dub if I've ever seen one. Well, look at Strider messing up his Oki. Oh, that's ugly. He, me he messed up his command grab there. That's right, Skulls rematch that back throw. Don't let him do jab command dash into command grab on you. No coaching, it's serious. All right, I mean, he got kind of smoked, but I think he took off like 20% health, which is much better than he did in all the rounds combined in their last encounter. Um, but he's also like 20% taller than the last time they played, so I don't know if that evens out in terms of health percentage. Oh, don't act like that was a cute setup. What, what is he, Strider's out here doing cross-up clap setups? So Strider, at this moment, he switches to a, a unique strategy where he's only playing the game with his peripheral vision. He chooses to instead intensely s stare down his opponent, uh, Skulzer, in the face uh, to raise his intimidation stat. 
um, because, you know, being a much older, much more grown and uh, developed man compared to a child is already not intimidating enough. He chooses to add Leer to his moveset to lower his defense stat um, and only play, you know, uh, nerf the offense a little bit, but buff the intimidation factor. Oh, and there's the rotate. But Skulzer rises to the challenge. Look at that. He, got, he has the golden bat top. It pivots the chair right back. No fear. He's not folding. <laughs> no fear. I mean, he is getting smoked, though. Oh, they both, <laughs> they both had a look. <laughs> smoked. <laughs> All right, it was an improvement, though. Oh, of course he had a pop off on him. Still killing the FGC. But you know, Skullzer, he held his own, so props to Skullzer. You know how many Reddit posts I saw about that match where the Reddit comments were honestly berating Strider and uh, calling him a douchebag and an asshole for popping off like that. Some people just can't read the room. You know what I mean? They just can't read the room. I feel like that was a beautiful moment. And if anything, that involved Skullzer much more in the community and, you know, held him to some respect rather than patronizing him and belittling him. You know, it was all in good fun. And I, I know Skullzer has fond memories of uh, that showdown and rematch. However, not every pro subscribes to the ideology of taking any competitive match as an opportunity to beat a child's ass. No. In fact, maybe the most well-known player of all time, Daigo subscribes to a very different ideology when he goes and plays people who might be less experienced when it comes to fighting games. So let's see Daigo here um, going up against a new member of the FGC. Last game, last round, Lupe still comes. He's feeling the pressure now. Oh no, okay. I don't like any of his full bars. Let's see. Oh, jeez, that has to be 70% damage. Oh my goodness. Wait, oh, no. No, wait, 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 wait. Fighting against the rope. Oh, the parries on Lupe's wake up. Yes. Huh? Okay, that is Lupe, a legitimate combo. Get some damage. Up. Oh no, uh -oh. and he's playing for the two player. Oh, there it is. Oh, Lupe <laughs> messed up the timing with the V trigger. He understood what was happening. <laughs> It's getting down to the wire, Daigo. 2-2, two, two, final round of the final game here. It's all down to this last interaction. Who will it be? Oh, man! He tried the uppercut! He tried the uppercut! It didn't come out. It's Lupe. You know, it, it's such a historical moment for a newcomer of the FGC to take a set on such a storied and, you know, uh, respected individual as Daigo. So they're both taking a moment to realize the achievement here and let it all sink in and it's official lupe at the launch party for street fighter 5 has claimed victory over our greatest player of all time daigo wash confirmed today all right we can go we go into a lot of detail about this i feel like this is a whole youtube video on its own to talk about the lupe daigo set and what it meant for the fgc at the time but let's keep it a buck here daigo is clearly being a showman and uh, trying to put on a show with this set. So he makes the set go down to the wire here. When we get to the final round, he's doing things like parry on Lupe's wake up to try to get like a, a fancy parry moment. So he's not doing, you know, exactly the optimal Ken play here, right? He's trying to get the parries on the wake up EXDP. He messes those up a few times. Uh, he's trying to keep it competitive, trying to keep it stylish and uh, not go all out on Lupe. That's very clear. However, I'm pretty sure the final moment of this set was not intentional from, from Daigo. This final interaction here, you can see that he sets up the V-Trigger to, to, you know, he's just pretending to control ground. He's basically gonna wait for Lupe to do something to get himself killed. That's exactly what he's gonna do here. And here he goes, he jumped. It's time to do the Ume Shoryu. Oh, wait a minute, my DP just got stuffed. He does heavy punch DP in this scenario. You see the wisp following behind the, the fist there, indicating it's a heavy DP. Medium DP would be the one you wanted to use in this situation. Either he didn't know or he just forgot in the moment. I'm pretty sure he wanted to stand back to the last second and then get the round and get the W here, but then he kind of actually messed up at the very end. Yeah, Street Fighter V wasn't out at the time, but they didn't have time to play the game. So he, he probably just wasn't ready to do the different DP version. And then he actually died. 
<laughs> so Daigo is clearly taking it easy on Lupe, but then he took it a little too easy uh, at the very end. He set himself up for failure in the sandbag. And I think this set honestly had a huge ripple effect on the FGC and affected a lot of people's perception of Street Fighter V for a long time. There's a whole story to be told here on how this set alone impacted the course of Street Fighter V in its history. But, you know, it's funny to see Daigo take it easy on his opponents who aren't as well versed in fighting games. But to be honest, these aren't tournament sets. I couldn't find any tournament sets of Daigo beating up on kids because in tournament, you know, for a fact, Daigo would not be sandbagging like this. In exhibition, it's a little bit of a different vibe, of course. And there's another example here of him actually uh, going up against a young player here. We've already referenced this a couple times on this channel. It's a classic. Everyone loves this clip. We got Daigo at the uh, the 2014, this game show here, um, playing our favorite master, the kid who believed he could if he just mashed hard enough. It's a classic. Daigo's there playing Evil Ryu against Hakan. And there he is, you see on the left side of the screen, he mashed so hard, I think he hit the start button. He got that one round, he is feeling himself. Daigo on that 13 win streak, you know he's sweating bullets at this point. Streak about to end at any moment here. There you go, kid. Keep mashing. You know it's working. Daigo playing his heart out. Um, you know, jab, 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 jab. No combo. Uh, classic Daigo maneuver from this era with Evil Ryu. I saw him drop the same combo in many tournaments before he started landing the crispy stuff in 2015. There we go. Interesting strategy. Allow him to corner himself. Uh, the anti-jump strategy there. Just allow your opponent to corner yourself and they assist and go into the air. And there... I think Daigo had a glitch. Um, he forgot the script for a moment because the moment he saw that jump and he had beat an uh, Ultra 2 on the, the table, I mean, that was just like a glitch in the in this program right there. You know, it's instantaneous reaction. You see person go up in the air, you have Ultra 2, you activate Ultra 2. That's just been trained to him as instinct at that point. And so he had to, uh, you know, end the uh, FGC career of this young child here. And then, uh, you know, set him on the wrong path by giving him a fighting game pad. So, you know, Daigo was a little bit different. He kind of went easy on the kids, right? He took it easy. He didn't go all out. But these are very different sets than tournament or ranked matchmaking. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how I feel about approaching playing players who are younger, who are newer to fighting games, who, you know, aren't as experienced. Should you go all out? Is it killing the FGC to not hold back and go easy on them? Listen. If you're in tournament, if you're being matched in a matchmaking system, if it's a random online match where you're getting paired up with different people, you play the game. You just play the game. You play what you intend to do, what you would do against any other player, regardless of their level. You're playing to win. When you're playing ranked, and if it's a young child with his mic on, it's ranked, buddy. We're playing to play. It's totally different than when you go to a local, go to an offline event, and you're spending time with someone in order to teach them a game. If you are playing a, a young player in tournament, you beat their ass. But after the tournament, maybe then you can talk to them and ask if they want any advice, run some sets, you know, offer some kind of, uh, you know, companionship at that point to give them, uh, give them the olive branch, you know, just show them, hey, in tournament, that's business. After tournament, you know, we, we run sets, we, we train, we learn together. So I think it's ridiculous to look at people when they're in tournament or at, in a ranked match where there's no personal connection and to make extrapolations from that. If you use those kind of examples though to justify being an asshole to new players or to never offer advice to new players, especially in a local setting, I think that's really stupid. When you're in a local and you're hanging out at a meetup, that is the time to make a human connection, to discuss ideas, to share things, to teach new players. That is when you share information and you help raise the next generation of players. That is the time. When you're in tournament, I'm not gonna sit there and coach you in tournament because that's patronizing you and that's teaching you the wrong thing. When you go to an out-of-state tournament, when you go to a real event, your opponent's not gonna tell you what to do. They're gonna be praying that you don't know the matchup but don't know how to play so that they get an easy dub and move on to the next match in the bracket, right? You know, I think it's it's kind of ridic ridiculous to hold these players at full for any other behavior in tournament matches. But also on, on the same token, you know, don't be a jerk to new players in the right context. If it's at a local, 
if you're hanging out playing friendly sets and it's not tournament, you know, maybe it's time to go easy on them. Maybe it's time to, to ask them if they want to learn anything or to focus on certain aspects of your gameplay. You don't need to just spam moves over and over and not tell them the answer to it. I would rather spam a move and tell them, hey, you can do X, Y, or Z to deal with this if they're actually trying to learn in a setting where you can actually communicate and exchange ideas back and forth. There's, an, there's a time and place for everything. There's a time to beat some ass. There's a time to be friendly and share information and help teach other players. And basically, just use your common sense. That's all I have to say. But the final most important thing to remember is it is your God-given right as a fighting game player to beat kids ass in fighting games. That is your right. You put the years in to get good. If you show up to a tournament or a ranked match, you go all out. You earned it. Period. That's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment and let me know if there's any other funny matches of, you know, fighting game pros beating up on people who aren't as good. I think they're always funny to watch. So if you have any other examples, please let me know. I'll be checking them out. And that's it. Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.